right, 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. A few, about a month ago or so, I went on my first airplane flight. I am not exaggerating, in probably 30 years. My son uh, invited me to go to New York with him, and I did. And, uh, and I, I, I used to fly all the time, but I'm telling you, the last three decades, I don't think I flew anywhere. And I might be re- misremembering, but anyway, what I'm getting at here is I forgot, you know, they stand at the front of the airplane, those stewardess or whatever you call the flight attendant person, and they're telling you in case we crash, you need, there's a life thing under your seat, there's an oxygen thing that'll fall down from the ceiling, and I'm in the very front row, so I can see the writing on the door that leads to the cockpit, and the writing on the door indicates that the door is fortified in some way to uh, to make it impossible, I guess, to, to break through it, and you realize... When you're looking at this, and, and, and even before I got on the airplane, uh, you go through all these checks and making people making sure that you don't have any guns, any weapons, right? And you realize this really is a different world. I mean, this is really is a different world from when I used to fly before. And, of course, even at the airport, you can't uh, be with the people who dropped you off. you got to say, okay, I'll, I'll see you later. And you, you go into the airport without anybody, um, except if you're traveling with somebody. And so when you hear stories like um, like the Pulse nightclub down in Orlando, for example, and you say, my gosh, the world is crazy. What would you do if you were in those circumstances? When, I, when I'm listening to the, the st- flight attendant saying, in case we crash, the one thing I'm thinking is, well, I'll never need this information. We're not going to crash, right? Well, don't think that because you might. You might need, you might need to pay attention to that. You never know. Uh, so we have somebody on the phone right now that's going to help us out in case some horrible, horrible thing is, becomes part of our life, and we don't want that, but it could. Chris Bird is a former British Army officer with service in the Royal Military Police. He's a crime reporter. He's the former president of the Texas Concealed Handgun Association, and he's written a book called Surviving a Mass Killer Rampage, When Seconds Count, Police Are Minutes Away. Uh, bottom line is, police, we love our police, but you know, they might not get there until the bad guy has done the worst possible thing, which is what happened with the, at the Pulse nightclub. Uh, Chris Bird, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Larry. It's a pleasure to be with you. Where are you right now? I'm in San Antonio, Texas. All right. Uh, well, thank you for being on the air with us. Yeah, the world is so different now, and but but it was always. I mean, we always had a crazy world. It just seems like we're seeing more of it now, aren't we? Well, I I think so. This is true. Uh, like you, I seldom fly. The only time I will fly is uh, uh, when I'm crossing large bodies of water, like to get to England or Australia, where I have family. Um, but uh, otherwise, if I can drive, that's what I'll do. Yeah, I don't blame um, you. Yeah, and uh, and basically, it's because of the uh, the appalling way that uh, uh, people get treated in airports. But uh, as far as the uh, the, <coughs> the Pulse nightclub incident uh, is concerned, um, I was at the Gun Rights Policy Conference, which is held every year. This year, it was in uh, uh, Tampa. Um, and uh, we had a, an address from uh, the sheriff of Brevard County, Wayne Ivey, and uh, basically he told us, uh, and a lot of this is in uh, is in my book. Uh, he said he put it rather colorfully. He said, uh, uh, "We will respond to an active shooter incident uh, at Mac Two with our hair on fire, but you are the people who are there, and the best thing I." can do for you is teach you how to uh, uh, to defend yourselves yes and yes. Uh, and he has a program that uh, uh, an eight hour program that uh, he makes available to his residents and after San Bernardino um, he was doing this once a month now he's doing it uh, once a week and he's booked up for a year really so you know there is a uh, Sorry, there, there's a requirement uh, out there. There's a lot of people who are interested in in uh, taking responsibility for their own survival. We had a, an incident happen here, in, and you might have seen the video. It was one of those uh, internet things where people gambled like 
low like low dollar amounts i can't remember what they called it now an internet something internet cafe internet cafe thank you robin and so these two two kids uh, two young men whatever came in to uh to rob them and one of the old guys working one of the internet machines had a handgun and shot back and it, it made it, w it was like a viral video everybody's saying oh my gosh th th these two kids were i don't know if any of them got hit i think one of them did get hit yeah but the point is a concealed weapon saved the day in this case and it, it, yes, it really, uh, and it was right here not too far from where we're talking right yeah. now right the um uh the the thing that the um uh, the the anti gun people um, keep on telling you is uh, how many people uh, get killed and and uh, uh, a lot of those killings are in fact uh, suicides. Um, but uh, the uh, the the problem with their approach is that in more than ninety percent of the cases where an ordinary citizen uses a gun for self defense, they don't even fire a shot let alone hit anybody. And uh, it, it's just the production of the gun uh, that makes the, uh, uh, the perpetrator yeah. suddenly realize that uh, he has urgent business in the next county. Right, I have a, a question for you, and I don't know if you know the answer. And I, I, don't, I don't mean to uh, give you an unfair question, but what's that noise? I don't know. Um, so, but in the Pulse nightclub, didn't the pol wasn't the policy of the nightclub to not bring in handguns. I mean, you, you, somebody who was there might have had a license, but they had to leave it out in the car, right? Um, yes, I, I think that's um, uh, certainly here in Texas. Um, if uh, a bar or a club earns more than 51% of its revenue from the sale of alcohol for consumption on the premises, then you're not allowed to take a gun in there. And I gather that there is something similar in, in Florida's law. So what could have been done there if they weren't allowed to... Ha Let's assume that some of those people who were in there could have had their gun and could have stopped this guy before he did all the damage he did. What, since they couldn't have their guns, what else could they have done? Well, I uh, took, a, uh, when I was researching this book, I, I uh, was uh, allowed to, uh, to take a two-day course um, for instructors in the ALICE program. Um, ALICE stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate, not necessarily in that order. And I refer to that as the unarmed response. Um, it gives you options. In a lot of cases, uh, unfortunately, still schools and other organizations um, insist on lockdown. If, if there's something bad happening, they say lockdown, lockdown, and everybody goes and cringes under a desk or in a, in a corner um, and waits for uh, professionals to, uh, to come and rescue them. And this is a recipe for disaster. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one, of, one of the things that uh, Wayne Ivey, Sheriff Wayne Ivey, told us was that uh, up until the Orlando uh, nightclub shooting, he had been teaching basically um, something that, that uh, is catching on, even with the federal government, and that is uh, run, hide, fight. And he said a lot of the people in the Pulse nightclub did what they were telling them to do. They went and hid. But unfortunately, they went and hid in uh, a place like a bathroom where there's only one e entrance uh, and exit. Yeah. And so they got trapped in there and, uh, and they got killed. Oh my uh, so uh, he's changed his uh, his training a little, and uh, one of the first things, if you don't have a gun, get out of there. Um, the guy who was talking to us, uh, 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 instructing us about this Alice program, um, a guy called Bury, uh, uh, he said that uh, when his son was six years old, he took him to the principal's office, and he said, I have given my son permission to break a window or do anything that he has to do to get out of the school if um, there, there is a uh, an active shooter incident. And uh, the... the principal said, uh, you can't do that. So uh, he said, I can and I have. 
I can come back later and pay you for a broken window. I cannot replace my son. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And uh, so you'll find that a lot of police officers instruct their children. If you have something like that, like a, a call for a lockdown or something, get out. And uh, that's uh, the safest thing. But if you get caught that's in... great advice. I love that advice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's tell all the children to do that. Yeah. 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 I, I think so. And the, the other thing connected with that is uh, you have to have information. Um, it's not an, uh, enough to say lockdown, lockdown. Uh, some people who are very close to the action, maybe lockdown is a uh, an option, a good option. Uh, maybe you can barricade the door. Maybe you can uh, do uh, things like that. But uh, if they're a little bit further away, the best thing that they can do is evacuate. But they have to know where the threat is and what the threat is. Yeah. And that very often doesn't come across. I believe in the Pulse nightclub. I believe they were tra- there were uh, there was a group of people trapped, and there was nothing they could do, and they actually broke out through the cement blocks. I believe I remember seeing that in the news. I mm-hmm. could be wrong about that, but I, I believe I don't know how they did it, but they must have just kept punching and pushing, and, and they broke through that wall. Mm-hmm. Well, there was also some, uh, I, I guess he was uh, either former military or, or current military, and uh, he led a bunch of people out. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think that's I'm, the I'm same. Not, yeah, I think that's the same thing I'm talking about. I think that. Yeah, I think he's the one who kind of showed them that you can break through a wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, but the other thing is, if you are stuck somewhere like that, we, we did a uh, an exercise in this program where um, we uh, we had one guy who was acting as the bad guy. He had a plastic gun, and. Uh, um, We had a couple of people who had uh, softballs, like a little larger than a baseball, but but they were fairly soft, so they wouldn't hurt somebody. And as soon as he came in and started uh, to, uh, to shoot... Uh, they started throwing these rubber balls at his head. Okay. And the result was uh, his gun went up because his hands went up to protect his face and his gun was pointing at the ceiling. Uh, at that point, um, you need somebody, uh, and this has been done before. It was done in uh, a, uh, a school in Springfield, Oregon. Wow. You need somebody to lead the charge against this guy. Just go get him, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful stuff. I, I, there was a scene in, there was a movie, and I think it was about uh, the president, and it was, uh, um, gosh, uh, the guy who played uh, Indiana Jones. Um, oh, Air Force One. Air Force One. And Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, and there was a scene. Oh, Harrison Ford, yeah. Okay, so yeah. there was a scene in this movie, and I've often thought something about the scene. In the scene, there's a bad guy, and he's got all these people in a room, and he's got a gun. The bad guy has a gun. And I said to myself, if this was a real scene, uh, it was a fake, I mean, it was a fictional movie, but... If it was a real scene, why don't the men, when, when the guy's not in there, because he was walking back and forth, he was sometimes in the room, sometimes he wasn't. So when he wasn't in the room, why didn't all the men in the room say, okay, all of you ladies get to the back. When this guy comes in, we're jumping him. Some of us will get killed or shot, but at least he'll be done, you mm-hmm. know? And, and, and that's why I've often, there's more than you, you could team up on him, and of course somebody's going to be sacrificed, but I don't know, is that a stupid idea? No, it's not. It's it's a very good idea, and uh, uh, you've got, uh, uh, at one end of the scale, you've got uh, what those those people did on the aircraft that crashed into uh, Pennsylvania uh, at 9-11. Right, right. They tried to to attack, and unfortunately they weren't successful, but at least they tried. At the other end, you've got this guy, uh, his name is Jake Riker. Uh, He was 17 years old. It was his 17th birthday when he was in school in uh, Springfield, Oregon, and uh, one of his, uh, one one other student had just uh, already killed his parents. He came in with a semi-automatic uh, 22 rifle, and uh, he had actually shot 
uh, Jake, and Jake hadn't realized it, but he led the charge, uh, tackled him. He was a, a big guy, uh, a wrestler, wow. and uh, he was able to get the uh, the gun went flying, and then the uh, the kid uh, tried to uh, to grab, well, did grab a Glock from his uh, waistband, a handgun, mm. and. Uh, um, he uh, was able to, uh, uh, to to get that away from him, but unfortunately he lost a bit of a finger uh, because the gun did go off. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, but but basically he led the charge and was able to overcome the bad guy. Chris Bird is our guest. I need to take a break, Chris, and we'll come right back. Uh, the book that Chris has written, uh, this is so fascinating, and it's the kind of stuff you wish you you hope that you never have to use, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like anything else you prepare. Why you put on a seatbelt? You don't want to be in a crash. You want to be ready. All right, so Surviving a Mass Killer Rampage is the title of the book. We will be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Tuesday, Election Day, partly sunny skies with a high of 78 to 82. Tuesday night will be partly cloudy with lows ranging from 59 inland to 63 along the coast. For Wednesday, partial sunshine, high 76 to 80. Heading into Thursday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 75 to 79. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall -wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Experience Christmas at Gaylord Palms, presented by Fujifilm Instax, November 18th through January 1st. Enjoy spectacular holiday decor, dining, and entertainment, including ice, with an all-new theme featuring a Charlie Brown Christmas, Cirque Dreams Unwrapped Stage Show, Breakfast with Charlie Brown and Friends, Alpine Rush Snow Tubing, and much more. It's everything Christmas in one extraordinary place. Tickets and overnight packages, including priority extra cool hour admission to ice, are on sale now at Christmas at GaylordPalms.com. Christmas time is here, and this holiday season, Gaylord Palms puts a brand new twist on a Christmas classic. It's Ice, presented by Pepsi, featuring a Charlie Brown Christmas by Charles Schultz, November 18th through January 1st. See the whole Peanuts gang carved in over 2 million pounds of colorful ice, including Snoopy's decorated doghouse and dancing at the holiday play rehearsal. Your awe-inspiring experience concludes with the wonder of the nativity in ice. For tickets and packages, visit Christmas at GaylordPalms.com. I'm Walt Dartland, and I'm running for Congress in District 2. Because you deserve a choice. To get money out of politics, to receive a better, affordable health care, to make sure your tax dollars are respected, to keep promises to veterans, to protect Florida's environment. I'm a Marine veteran, a former Deputy Attorney General and Consumer Advocate. I'm Walt Dartland, asking for your vote on November 8th. Paid for and approved by Walt Dartland, Democrat for Congress. <laughs> Veterans are the foundation upon which our freedom is built. Listen to The Source WOCA each Thursday at 9 a.m. to Veterans News with Hank Whittier from Vets Helping Vets. You'll hear tributes, information on veterans' issues, and stories that will make you laugh, cry, and feel proud. Veterans News always focuses on the military, past and present, and on our first responders. Veterans News is brought to you each week by Bob Wines Camellia Gardens and Nursery, keeping you blooming since 1952. All right, six minutes before 11 o'clock. I took the break late because I was just not even paying attention to the clock, and, uh, and it's understandable. What a fascinating conversation. Chris Bird is our guest. He is a former British Army officer with service in the Royal Military Police. He's a crime reporter. He's the former president of the Texas Concealed Handgun Association. He's in Texas right now, still has his British accent. He's also, Robin pointed out, the author of a book called Thank God I Had a Gun, True Accounts of Self-Defense, and another book called The Concealed Handgun Manual. And the mm -hmm. book he's on the air to promote right now is called Surviving a Mass Killer Rampage When Seconds Count, Police Are Minutes Away. Chris, I have a question for you that is more political in nature than, than what we've been talking about, but it is directly re related to it. A lot of the people who are for gun control um, will point to England and say, 
there are there are hardly any uh, gun crimes there um, and and say we should do whatever they do there we should do here whatever they do there what is your thought on that well as a uh, <laughs> somebody who um, was born and grew up in England um, I uh, I haven't been there for, for quite a long time except uh, briefly to visit but uh, um, the problem is that those people have uh, basically been told that uh, uh, self-defense is illegal. Uh, defending yourself will get you into more trouble than, uh, uh, than the guy who's trying to attack you. Um, in fact, I think one of their judges said, burglars have rights too. And uh, th You're this, kidding. to me, is absolutely wow. horrendous. Um, yeah, yeah. And and what happens is that uh, it, it's the law of the jungle. If somebody breaks into your house, and uh, um, they they are bigger and stronger than you are, uh, if you have anything around that you could use as a weapon, um, and and you hit them or, or uh, what have you, they then uh, you're in more trouble than they are. And, and I find this really, really uh, offensive. Uh, my father fought in World War II, really? yeah. and uh, I think he'd be rolling in his grave if he knew what had happened to the country. Gosh. So going back to the unthinkable, which is the Pulse nightclub, and that kind of scenario, if, if, if we could look in retrospect, hindsight is twenty twenty. If if those young people could look back, could they have grabbed chairs and thrown them at this guy? Could they have thrown bottles at him? Obviously, it was a bar. There must have been bottles everywhere. I mean, they could have thrown things at him, and and it would have done something, right? If they if they all knew to do this. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The the big problem is people think that okay, this is going to happen to somebody else, uh, so they don't um, really get the education that they need as to what is possible. And uh, uh, you know, in in schools, um, for years, for decades, they've had. Uh, fire drills. Uh, what happens if a fire breaks out? Yeah, yeah. Well, almost nobody, um, it, to my knowledge, uh, in a school has been killed by a fire in in uh, many decades. But a lot of people have been killed um, by. Uh, uh, People who come in, very often they're people who, students uh, from the school, they know their way around, and uh, they come in with a gun, and the students don't know what to do. Yeah. So they've been told, well, like in Columbine, um, uh, get down, get under the desk. I, I, what good does that do? It just makes them easier targets. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that... Uh, uh, so people the, just walk around and shoot them. I'm sure you heard the conversation that teachers should be armed. Do you, do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. The, only those that want to be. But uh, uh, there's a lot of that in the book. Um, uh, the first... Uh, uh, school district in Texas to uh, uh, to, to uh, go that route um, was a little school district called Harold way up by the Oklahoma border and uh, the sheriff's office is 17 miles away so they call 911 uh, we're on the way but it's going to be probably 30 minutes before you get a deputy gotcha. to, uh, right. to actually turn up the other thing that the, the book point that the book makes is that uh, uh, what happened in, in Columbine was they were depending on the SWAT team. The SWAT team didn't go in until 45 minutes after oh my gosh, the shooting yeah. started, and the, the oh. people were killed in 10 minutes. That's horrible. Um, Chris, I, I think you're saving lives with your book, and, and I hope I'm not being too optimistic, but I think so. Uh, we have to go can you give us a website so we can get the book? Sure. Uh, sure. Um, privateerpublications.com. Okay. Privateerpublications.com. Yeah, and I have a toll-free number. If uh, you can get it through Amazon or uh, any bookstore, can order it for you. Okay. But, give, uh, give the number if, real quick. Uh, 888 700 
4333. Okay. Thank you, Chris. That was really a great interview. We will be right back. The polls, several states considered toss-ups in the presidential election. That includes Ohio, where many voters seem to be glad it's almost over. I think people are just uh, tired of all the stuff that's been going on. Donald Trump has edged Hillary Clinton in pre-election polling, both with dozens of trips here, though Ohio Governor Republican John Kasich didn't vote for either candidate. We're told that hundreds of election observers for both parties will also be at polls statewide. Fox's Jeff Manasso in Columbus. In Florida, another hotly contested state, less than half the electorate will go to the polls. That's because half the state's registered voters already voted, casting 6.4 million ballots in early voting.